So if you want to share, I would love to just like, does, do people go to the desert? Who goes to the forest? Who goes to the beach? I always yeah. go to the beach. Yeah. Oh, Kelly's Hawaii. just said Hawaii. Oh, I love Hawaii. Magical. At the beach, always. And I had a debate in my head today. I was like, why am I at the beach again? And then I just gave over to being at the beach because I thought, oh, maybe I want to be in the mountains, but I was at the beach. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally get that. I'm, I'm a beach girl too. But the thing about it, it's not the beach, it's the ocean. It's yes. the ocean, the salt, the smell. Oh my God. Okay, Ecuadorian rainforest, ocean and beach, beautiful trainer in the woods, Lake Acotink in Virginia. Oh, ocean, yeah, forest with some body of water. I mean, it, it's so personal, but one of the reasons I use that as, as a, a balancing technique with everybody is you cannot lie to yourself about your nature spot, right? So it's, it starts to get you very authentic from the very beginning when we start to do the connections that I, I want to take you on the journey. You're already authentic. Love the ocean. Meditations like these always take you to a forest. Interesting. Live in the woods, go to the bottom of my garden by the bubbling brook. Oh, that sounds nice. The redwoods, amazing. You go to the waterfall. Oh, Waterford Island. Oh, yes. Ireland is one of my special places. It's like a piece of my heart is in Ireland. So um, when everybody is back, um, well, more to the point, when Mark and Jenny are back, wherever they are. Mark and Jenny are here. They are always here, but they are <laughs> They are here and they are currently present <laughs> for their Zoom screen. <laughs> right, are they? Because they've moved off mine somewhere else. So that's the way. No, I, I can see them. They look beautiful and they're ready to go. So I'll go ahead and introduce Mark and Jenny. Um, I know I've, I've had the pleasure of working with them a little bit. Um, Mark and Jenny are like meaning and message whisperers. Um, what they do, well, what I've seen them do is like, look, they, they talk to you and they like, look through your life for the golden thread that, you know, something that like a gift that's been there, you know, what's your, your experiences and your trials have set you up for, for the, for the um, gift that you're bringing forward to the world. And then they help you kind of put a bow on it and make it, you know, understandable to other people. Because sometimes, like, at least when they're working with me, like some of my experience, some of my experiences are extremely personal. They're very powerful to where I've come. But then there's other of the experiences that, that are more powerful for, for other people, right? Um, like when we're telling stories, we, gotta, we get to take some of the pieces out. And they are masters at that. So I'm really excited to see what they're gonna bring us today. So take it away, Mark and Jenny, please. Thank you, Monty and Sally and everyone here. This has been amazing so far and it just feels so moving to be here with all of you and to be able to meet this way with people from all over. Um, and it feels like an incredible way to use this pause to create something new that is different and uniquely powerful than what we would be doing otherwise if things were different in the world right now. And, um, this feels like the perfect time to be doing this kind of work, like you were saying, Sally, because, you know, when you think about it, um, anytime there's a challenge or a crisis, whether it's in nature or life, there always comes a rebirth with it, right? You know, I think of like a property that gets uh, burnt down and you come back years later or even not that much later and new life has completely emerged from it. And, you know, one thing that we've been hearing a lot, Sally, you were talking about um, permission and we hear a lot from people like, is it okay for me to be happy right now? Is it okay for me to have joy? Is it okay for me to feel hopeful? Is it, and we feel like not only is it okay, but like we are the rebirth. And so while we don't want to push away uh, grief, sadness, whatever you might be feeling at any given moment, and I know I cycle through a lot of, of feelings and you do too, but uh, we also, are the rebirth and it's like when you get those those moments of, of joy or the optimism or that questioning what is really meaningful to you right now it's allowing all the stuff to come in that's going to be that rebirth and that beast that that burst of creativity that's happening so 
Um, you know, we love just holding the space for all that right now. And um, we do work with, with messaging and we just want to give it a slightly bigger context. Like messaging is not just like, your what I do statement or how you talk about an offering. It is that, of course, but like Monty said, it's also, it's the golden thread of your life. Messaging is the message that, you know, you're getting from the universe, from God, from your life, and that you're here to convey and contribute to the world, right? It's, it's the message that your life is really here to bring to the world. And we love going to that place with people. And what's the story of your life, the story that you're here to tell, and the frequency underneath that you're tuning into, the theme that you're here to, to bring to people. The, the change you're here to help other people make um, or the healing that you're here to bring to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And like Sally has said, it's, it's not what you do. It, it's not your, your job, your role, any of that. It's, it's, it's very connect, messaging and purpose are very intertwined. So like this, this who you are, this essence, you know, that Sally just brought us to that place then messaging is really about giving it words. So, so you all started to do that, even just with your three words, even if those aren't words that you'll share in every context, it's still, there's a power to naming something. You know, when you, when you give it words and you give it a name, it, it kind of, it's like bringing it into form mm -hmm. and it, it kind of, it makes it, it makes it real and it gives you confidence, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and so sometimes the challenge with messaging is it, it can be, well, actually, let me just backtrack and say, we think the happiest people are people who marry like that, that essence, that deepest purpose, you know, like what we've just been talking about with something you love to do and just are passionate about. Yeah. So like Sally gave her the perfect example when you said the person who cleans your house, but that's not who she is. Right. And like, for example, I did web design for a while, like years ago. Right. But my purpose was that I believe everybody has a voice. Everybody has something important to say and the right to say it and be heard. And so I was designing websites at the time, but what I was really doing was helping people find their voice and express it in the world. And over the years, that form has changed. I don't do web design now. I do other work, but the underlying purpose is somewhat the same. Right. And so mm -hmm. the happiest people, like Jenny was saying, marry something you love to do in the world with this deeper, higher purpose that mm -hmm. you're actually here to express. Yeah. And then sometimes the challenge with messaging can be that it, it like makes sense to you, but how do you give it words and express it? So in a way that both enlivens you, but is also clear to other people. So it really takes on legs and gets out into the world. And we find that when you give something the right words, there's something that clicks and, and it gives you that sense of ownership um, to run with it. And those words can apply to the words for your purpose. Like we just went through that exercise with Sally, but they can apply to many things like how you talk about what you do, or if you're naming something like a, a title of an offering or a book or you know a program you're creating it can it can be any of that and um yeah so so what we want to help do in this segment is come up with some words and some messaging that really helps you feel like you're bringing your deepest purpose out into consciousness and you feel like yeah that, that that's it that's that's what i'm here to do that's how i want to talk about it and uh make it happen and so we're going to do some hot seating where we we take you know a couple volunteers and and work with you and there's a lot of different windows that we can use into the messaging so so you could think about um what you want help with around that maybe it's your what i do statement like how do i say this is what i do or or maybe you want to uh, talk about what to call something like an offering that you're you're working on or even just get clear mm -hmm. on what it is you're offering and those are all the different kinds of things that can help you with and it's a really fine line there actually is no separation between your, your purpose figuring out what you want to do and your and your messaging so wherever you are whatever's coming up for you that's where we want to go with you mm -hmm. so uh we are and maybe the best see. way to do is if you'd like to to volunteer just um because we can't necessarily see everyone, just maybe type in the chat, hi, I'd love to ask a question about my messaging. Yeah. Or just hi. Yeah. It's um, a raised hand. Okay. Uh, yeah. Lihia? Is that? 
Okay. All right. So let's see. So first we need to find. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Oh, hi, Leah. Hi. hi, great. <laughs> hi, we're good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you all? Yay. So, what would you like now to talk about? Now ready for hot seating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you like to talk about? Sure. My messaging uh, would be something that I'd like to talk about and make sure. I always feel like it's a, I, if it's not quite as clear, uh, so I just want to love to do that. So, um, so what I have is as I help first-time leaders be confident, authentic, and inspired so they're successful in business. And that's what I have. And tell us, first of all, how, how does that message feel to you? Is that something you've been been using already or is that new for you? I've, I've been tossing around a hundred different ones. Um, or a variety of them. And so this is the one that I've landed on now. And uh, I feel better about it. I feel like it's a lot more clear, but but I don't know. I, I, I don't know yet if it is. Um, tell us a little bit more about the people that you help. Can you think of somebody who's your ideal person, maybe somebody you've already worked with or somebody sure. that you like to work with? Sure. Um, the ones that I've been working with are either um, someone who just got a new role in a department or a business, um, mm -hmm. or they are entrepreneurs who've started their business and they're either having to start working with more people, like they've added staff, et cetera. And so they haven't had an opportunity to really and truly be um, someone who has to lead others. And so it's, um, so those are the, the people that, um, the community that, I, that I'm serving or working with. Um, to just support them and be um, that they understand the complexities that come with either supervising people, leading others, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Great. And what do you think is going on in their heads right now? Like when, when, if you could like hear what they're saying to themselves about what they're needing, what they're experiencing right now, maybe that they don't want to experience. Do you know what, what it is they're saying to themselves? Sure. So some um, would be the fear of where do I lead my people? Where do I go? Um, how can I, when I'm scared of what's going on currently, how do I try to be encouraging to my, my team? How do I, how do I, I don't even know where I'm going with my business or my department and, and where we're going to be in, nine, in, in two months, three months. So, so, so how, if I don't know, how do I, how can I be a better leader to them? Mm -hmm. Great. Do you want to um, say something that specifically speaks to this time we're in right now? Um, yes. Um, I guess a bit, but more also where there is some messaging of this is where how I could be a support to you, no matter if it's a crisis or not a crisis. Yeah. Um, the, the reason I asked that is because you, what you said just a minute ago related specifically to where we are right now. So you might yeah, want, that's what you're asking. <laughs> you might want to have a message, you know, specifically for this time, which isn't necessarily your overall message, but it could be something like how to be a confident leader in times of uncertainty. Okay. You know, and you might want right now to speak specifically into supporting people when everybody that you're leading is in a state of, of questioning things, um, you know, worried about their job. Like people right now are in basic survival fear. Some people, especially employees of companies. Um, right. So you might want to speak specifically to that just for the time being. Okay. Um, now your overall message, tell, tell us what it is you love about your work. Like what, what is it that made you get into this in the first place? Sure. Um, I've always enjoyed working with, um, with people who, with staff or, or leaders who want to do a really good, good, good in what, what they're doing. However, 
they're scared. They don't know what to do. And so I, I really love to be able to mentor and, and empower them and, and feel that they are not by themselves, that they, they, they don't have to look like they don't know what they're doing because they have someone that, I, that could support them through, what, through their learning. I don't want them to learn by trial and error. They don't need to if they have someone to coach them and mentor them to be, um, to be successful in their role. If it's a business leader or if it's a, a first time leader who, is, who just got a department and now they're responsible for it. Um, so, so that's what I really enjoy of, of just being there, um, not telling them what to do, but, but giving them that confidence that yes, they can do it. Uh, and they're gonna be a really good, good leader for their team. And I also just don't want, um, Really, quite honestly, there's sucky buses, <laughs> terrible bosses out there. I don't want um, people out there having terrible bosses. And if I could help a supervisor, a leader, a business leader not to be a sucky boss, then that's what I want to do. Do you have a belief? That's great, by the way. Do you have a belief about the kind of person who makes a great leader? Yes, yeah, someone who's a servant leader. A servant. Someone who, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, that's something I, I have um, 25 years of nonprofit work. And so I, it comes to, you know, that's something how I grew up with, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. in the world. And so uh, being a servant leader, being uh, of service to both the customer and to the ones you lead is important to me. Great. Um, I'm just writing some words down. One and what makes, what makes a sucky boss to you? What do you think? <laughs> not a uh, sure. They think of themselves, only think of themselves. They take credit for every, for everything. They never give uh, appreciation. They don't ever say thank you. Uh, they, um, someone who is very much puts everything on someone and doesn't understand that you're, you're piling things on and never does anything for others. Um, they just expect and dictate rather than um, being that we're all in this together, we gotta help each other out. And, the, and also not taking ownership of their own um, decisions when, especially when they're terrible, they're going to blame someone else. They're going to, they're not ever going to take it themselves. Um, so those are some of the, I could go on, but <laughs> I'll stop here. Yeah. So, um, okay. So what I want to say is that I love what you're doing. I feel like your initial message was pretty good, but but it was a little bit generic, a little bit bland. And I feel like the key to you is that you believe that the best leaders are people who are here to serve, right? Yes. And so uh, I just want to speak into, this isn't giving you the exact words, but so what we see, just reading between the lines, I feel the same way, is that in our world, often the people who are like, I should be a leader here, are the ones who have all of, I would say, quote, the wrong, I don't really mean wrong, but the wrong qualities, right? Like, I want to control other people. I want people to see things from my perspective. I just naturally feel like I have power over other people. And so we live in a world where we've been in this paradigm where those are the kind of people who step into leadership roles, right? Like, yeah. Um, the best leaders are the ones who actually want to make a positive difference up, uh, uplift other people and so I think that's what you believe and so you're, you're here to help people who are here to serve and uplift others okay embody leadership ah oh, that's great um, yeah so because a lot of the people just like I believe a lot of the people who have the most to say feel like they don't have a voice a lot of times the people who are the best leaders feel like they're not cut out to be leaders and that's really sad because they're the ones who we need as leaders. Right. So I would speak more into that. Like I would okay. say, you know, when we talk about kind of the thread, like your underlying theme, your mission, we have other terms for it. Um, you can put it in your own words, but I think the essence of it is the best leaders are, are those who are here to serve other people. And you yeah. help people who are here to serve up and uplift others to step into and embody their leadership. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. I recorded it so I wouldn't lose any other words. So thank you so much.
And again, those are the words coming to us. So you can play with the words. Uh, if that feels great, go with it. If you want to tweak things, you know, we want to feel like you, but I feel like that's the essence of it. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you. Hey. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I know we've got a bunch of comments here. Let's see who is next here. Um, okay. Do you want to scroll up the chat? Yeah. Or should we go with raised hands here? Can can um, Renee or Sally see whose hands are raised or can you mark? You see that they're raised hands, but I'm not seeing whose hands. I'm going to unmute. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I'm not always the best <laughs> assistant, but um, there is <laughs> Lily. Lily. Hand up. And Lorraine. And Lorraine and Natasha. Okay, great. Okay. Lily, so Lily, Lily. we'll do Lily first. Uh, we can figure out. Lily, can Lily you unmute? Grace, Lily Grace, come in. Lily Grace, I go. see you. I um, mean, I don't see you, but I see you here. I don't see you on video. I unmute you. I, I unmuted see. you. Lily, are you there? Oh, yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi. I'm. Uh, was listening to you while I was at work at my day job, <laughs> uh -huh. so I kind of had to make a quick exit. Um. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no problems. Um, Welcome. Uh, yeah. What would you like to talk about? How can we help you? Well, it, mostly it's about I'm I'm a new, newly certified um, life coach. Um, I think you know Veronica Cristo. She's my mm -hmm. maybe you do. Anyway, mm -hmm. she's my uh, mm -hmm. my coach trainer, <laughs> and um, and I am a Reiki master and a herbalist from long back and. I would like to incorporate um, nature and, and earthing and things like that into my um, life coaching uh, because I feel like that nature is the great healer. And, and I, I just mostly need to know how to promote it as that without just sounding too wordy or like, hey, here's here's a book I've written about how to incorporate nature into your coaching or into, you know, your, the work that I do with you or whatever. And I, and I just want to, I need to come up with something simple and succinct that, that explains what I do. And I don't know what I do because I'm new at this. And so, um, but I know that that's important to me and has always been. And so. Okay. Well, tell us two things. My first question is what, um, if, what, if I just ask you, what do you do? And I know it's, you're you're, make, you're making it up right now. It's not going to come up perfect, so don't worry about that. Yes. But what would you say? Well, um, I'm leaning towards a holistic life coach uh, through nature therapy or something. So that's kind of where I'm okay. at. Great. So. Okay. And then that's great. And tell us what? Why is nature important to you? What role does nature play in you? Well. Um, gosh, what, what does it not play a role in? Um, I just, I think nature is the great healer and the great teacher. And, and I've known that since I was a, a tiny little girl and, mm -hmm. and I've always known that there's more to us than what we can see and mm -hmm. that we don't end here. And, um, I, I don't, I don't know <laughs> that that's kind of, I just I, nature, nature and herbs and 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 mm -hmm. the earth and and everything about it is so powerful and mm -hmm. and just so transformational and and that's when we say you know if you're stressing out get out in nature if you're and and we feel that intuitively even if we don't you know we just think oh I don't need to go for a walk right now but we do we we need and not on a treadmill we need to be and not on a treadmill looking at a nature scene I'm, I'm yeah. Yes, there's a value to that, but it's not the same, you know? Yeah, and absolutely. So, so how do you use nature or, or will you use nature in your work with clients? Well, you know, um, I, that's a good question. I would very much like to lead retreats where mm -hmm. we actually go out in nature and, and I, I don't know, um, spend a day or a couple of days, maybe even. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm newly relocated <laughs> To Wisconsin, which means that it's uh, relegated to just a, a few months out of the year. But um, 
Mm-hmm. Is somebody saying they want to go on my retreat? Oh, that's funny. Um, that, that's funny. You're what? Yeah, absolutely. Get a hold of me, Corinne. Um, but <laughs> anyway, gonna, so you're going to take people. Are you going to take people out into nature? I believe so. Yeah, I I think that that's. Um, when I was a little girl, again, I would go with my family to the redwoods and the sequoias in California, and for mm-hmm. me, that was it was so powerful, mm-hmm. even as a little girl, that it was, I, I really believe, <laughs> this is great, I really believe that, that everything is holy, everything. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's a fabulous song that says that by Greg Tamlin, Holy Now. Everything mm-hmm. is holy now. But mm-hmm. even as a little girl, I felt the sacredness of being there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's just one of my best memories. That's beautiful. So, uh, yeah. And so you're going to take people into nature. Yes. And are you going to work with people exclusively in nature? Will it be a combination? Probably a combination. Um, I, I Because of how remote I am, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I, I originally had anticipated doing it um, solely through video. And, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't I couldn't get away from from the part of wanting to work with nature Mm -hmm. and so and you'll also do processes with people like yeah 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 Mm -hmm. the the um yeah a lot of um meditation and breath work um the the life coaching training that I have is um Mm -hmm. considered holistic or transformational it's it's really powerful Mm -hmm. and um so what are some of the kinds of um, pains or, or sadnesses or problems that you feel like nature can heal in a way that maybe other modalities just aren't the same? Oh, I, I don't, I, it, it's easier to say what, what can they not heal? I don't, I don't. Do you have a personal experience like when you were a little girl or other times of your life turning to nature and finding, you know, the healing there that you needed? Um, I, yes. And I, I, nothing specific because it's been so ongoing and, and so much of my life has been lived not in nature per se, but, but out of the cities and, and in the country and, and, um, and even, even gardening and on the farms and, and things like that. And, and it's just so to have any connection with nature is just so powerful and and not everyone can can live on a farm or live in the country and and not everyone wants to certainly but but i think the current conditions are changing a lot of things for a lot of people <clears throat> and almost without exception no matter where we live there's some way we can access the the nature that's around us and the healing and so yeah, so there's a lot of unknowns for me still, but <laughs> I, uh, I, I just, I can't get away from knowing that I want to, to use that and, and access that with what I do with my life coaching. Mm-hmm. So, Great. Okay, so I don't think we'll come to the exact wording right now, because like you said, you're, you're still kind of birthing. Sure, exactly. sure. But yeah. I would really bring this wording into what you do you know talk about you know i use the power of the earth and nature and holistic healing techniques or something healing techniques i don't know if that's quite the right to create transformation um i use the power of nature and the earth to access your true nature Um, I go outside with you to help you go inside. You know, I would bring those words to what you do. Yes, Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. And, and really that's, that's, I just need a concise way to explain even like you said, what I'm wanting to do. And and that's not fleshed out yet, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love the dirt. Um, I don't know, but I know I've got to do it. <laughs> it's, it's 
something that's been brewing for a long time. Well, and right now I'm, I'm just in the middle of a marketing course that I'm finishing late, but, um, but it's in process. I'm in the process of, of coalescing everything and, and getting ready to launch. Mm -hmm. So well, I think you can start with a pretty simple statement. I wouldn't worry so much about getting the perfect words right now. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is as you do your work, so the first, because you can get hung up on like, I need to know the perfect words to yes. get started. Yeah. Um, yes. But what you're saying is that you use the power of nature and the earth and, you know, energy moving techniques or whatever, something techniques mm -hmm. to help people experience transformation. Or you could say create the life they want or whatever it is. What is it that you want to be kind of the ultimate? Like if you, if you could imagine somebody who's been working with you for a certain amount of time, like let's say you want to work with your ideal client for a year, I'm making that up. And a year from now, you could overhear them saying to someone exactly what they got from working with you. What would you love to Yeah, do? just a minute. Um. I, I don't know. I'm okay. I would, so here's what I would do. Consider that, uh, that question. Think about if I could overhear someone after going through the entire journey of what I'd love to do for them, you know, what would I love to hear them say? What would I love to hear to some, overhear someone telling a friend that, you know, um, they worked with me and this is what happened. So think about that. And when you, yeah. and, and this will evolve as you actually work with people. But if you can come yeah. to that, here's what I want to be like that final piece. Like it really helped me move into feeling like I'm totally living my purpose. Um, I discovered what I want my life work to be. I have great relationships now. I feel good about myself, right? Just think about what it is. Okay, so then you have your end result. And then you want to think about process. And for you, not, not too much in process, but for you, it's really important to bring in that you use the power of the earth and nature. Yeah. So it's like, I use the power of the earth and nature to help people X. Does that make sense? Yeah, and absolutely. That's where you want to start. And then that will become more and more refined as you work with people and you start actually hearing the words they say and you see yourself in action. Those words will evolve. But just sure. to get yourself out there, that's where you want to start. So I, I want to burst in with something. Sorry, I just had to. Um, mm -hmm. when, when I work with people, if they cry, they're on the right track. It's almost <laughs> like if they don't cry, I make them cry. So you're so <laughs> on the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing. But it's true. Like, <laughs> if I can get to that place where you're at yeah. right now, you're so on track. And you just follow that emotion, like, you know, that's the piece, which mm -hmm. is a soul calling versus, yeah. hey, my corporate job. Most people yeah. don't cry about their corporate job unless. <laughs> unless they're wanting to get away from it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I just had to yeah. say that to you. You're so on the right track. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. It's totally true. When we, when we work with people, they often cry and then they often are like, have moments of like, yes. And they go between like wanting to cry or crying and, and wanting to jump for joy. Right. Yeah. And you are, you're, you're, you're right there. And the, and the thing is right now, this is all really new, but like Sally said, like you're, you're right there, you know? Yeah. 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 Like I said, I, I know this is what I need to do. And I know that, that somehow I have to incorporate nature into what I do because I can't not do it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so it's going to be a simple statement for you starting out. I yeah. use nature too, and then think about that transformation, that change you yeah. can make. Yeah. 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 Just get, From, out start, get out there and start doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so thank you. And I, like I said, I was at work. I wasn't really supposed to be doing this. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but the, when I held up my hand, I thought, yeah, they won't call on me anyway. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do if they call on me? So 
it worked out that I was able to, like I said, kind of know, dodge off. People and, here get that you're doing exactly what you're meant to do because a lot of people are putting in the chat, I want to work with you. I love what you're doing. Oh. I want to be part of it. So, so you're there. So just open to receive it. And yeah, do yeah. And, and I know that I'm going to go through the beta phase, the beta phase. Yeah. And, and so, yes, absolutely. I, I'll be starting out and, and um, much less expensively than I will be doing later when I actually... Right. <laughs> have everything a little bit more in flow and all that so yeah the they can be they can be my beta testers yes exactly <laughs> remember the confidence comes from the doing sure yes you absolutely yeah do it and you're gonna be yeah. me yeah. yeah i think so okay. I'm, I'm a big advocate for nature so i i think i can do a great a really good job of helping other people to to feel that that power yeah. in the in the yeah. aliveness from it yeah so thank you thank you so much for yeah. calling on me today <laughs> that's yeah. awesome thank you all right let's see is it lorraine, lorraine? uh-huh i think lorraine is next lorraine hello can you hear me hi 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 can you hear me you can yes. hear me all right yes we can <laughs> yeah. i'm so excited thank you so so much really appreciate this I am a soul baby whisperer, an intuitive fertility coach. Mm. Um, I work with you and your high five baby to create a sacred environment to bring forth the miracle of conception. Together, we raise your vibration to a blissful and calm vibe to change the destiny of your Baba. Um, so there's two packages that I am proposing to give. I want to work with the women that are um, infertile, have been got, given a diagnosis of infertility. Um, so for me, they're mamas in waiting. Um, then also, I want to continue in, with another package when they become mamas to be. So it's very much two different aspects, but after having the same thread through it, because it's our thoughts, it's our environment, it's our feelings that we're wanting the baby inside us to feel very secure mm -hmm. and therefore to work with the soul within, within us and um, that everything is going to go smoothly and accepting, you know, you want this baby, this baby is going to come out of you, whether you want to or not, and accepting that labor is going to be what it is, mm -hmm. but being more positive about it. So it's very much a mindset all the way through. Um, and yeah, so I'm just wondering about the packages. What would you suggest to call them, to name them? Okay. I'm trying to get across, especially their thoughts, their mm -hmm. beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, as families, we take on our parents' patterns. Mm -hmm. And it's not so, some of them, <laughs> we don't want them to be. We don't want to keep them. And we certainly don't want to pass them on to our children. Yeah. So from this aspect, this is what I'm trying to get across. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the two different packages one at a time. So the, so the first one, let's talk about the one which is, you said you call the mamas in waiting. They're, they've been given a diagnosis of infertility. Yes. And so how do you work with them? I work with them through Reiki, with the angels, through Soul Blueprint uh, mm -hmm. Awakening. Um, as well, so this is all on a cellular level. So very much finding out, where, you know, um, first of all, to connect with the soul mm -hmm. that wants to um, come through them, to re be reincarnated, mm -hmm. and then to get them to look at themselves and see what patterns that mm -hmm. they've carried on that they need to transmute sooner rather than later and not pass it on to their child. Mm -hmm. okay. So very much Reiki, very much uh, energy management, um, and also, uh, yeah, the soul blueprint, uh, which is a Hebrew system, uh, and it's all on the birth name. So being able to help them 
to receive the name from the soul that's mm. um, coming into them. And um, because we bring our characteristics in on our name and it's the vibration of our name that mm. makes who we are. It's one of our unique identities. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a big lot. <laughs> What is the main thing that you want? So this, this woman has been um, given a diagnosis that she can't conceive. What is the main thing you want her to know? That she is perfectly fine. 25% uh, of these diagnoses, mm -hmm. they're not given a, a clear diagnosis. There's nothing physically wrong with them. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I'm saying absolutely, it's a cellular level that you need to be looking at. And what, what is the cellular level? It's our thoughts. It's how we feel about ourselves. And the, these new souls that are coming in at this Aquarian time, I fully believe, they want to reincarnate into a perfect environment to keep their connection to the divine. Mm -hmm. And to come in here and to be able to change the world to mm -hmm. love, bringing it back to love, bringing heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. So the mother has to raise her beliefs, her mindset, and every thought, everything within the environment. The tribes, as soon as a woman announces she's pregnant, they hide her away from the main part of the tribe. She's kept in a sacred place. She's looked after. She's made sure she doesn't get stressed. So mm -hmm. de-stressing is massive. Stress is one of the most biggest things that stops mm -hmm. us from conceiving. Great. Yes. And so, and so right now, we, we, you want to focus on the title itself, right? So yes. uh, have you had any thoughts about what to call it? No, because there's so much I want to get into the name to grab great. their attention. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Well, you can go with a, a really simple title. Like it could just be like, yes, you can conceive you know? Oh, okay. Which is the message you want to give. Yes. You know? I would probably I go like with something that. like that. You can go with something like receive and conceive your baby. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. So I would go with something like one of those two. You know, Thank it's not, you. It's not clever. It's just really straightforward. Okay. Yeah, no, that's lovely. That's perfect. That's perfect. Describe what you do, right? So the title yeah. kind of says it all. So I would go something like that. And then, now let's talk about the other package that you want to name. So that's for people who have, uh, they've conceived, so she's now pregnant. Yes. What's the main thing that you want to do for her? Again, making sure that her environment, every single moment that she is pregnant, that she's consciously aware of what mm -hmm. she is giving to the baby, how she's creating the cells of the baby. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very much her thoughts. It's her, where she is, her actual environment. If she's in an environment where she's stressful at work, mm -hmm. she needs to be able to shift and change that and protect the baby, mm -hmm. not be receiving that um, stress. That we, because we want the baby to be feeling safe and mm -hmm. connected to the baby. Bonding with her baby is going to be massive during the whole nine months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, jotting down some words here. Yeah. Um, do you want to focus more on the birth part or more on the whole pregnancy part? It's really the whole pregnancy. Yeah, the whole pregnancy, definitely, because uh, the birth. That's going to come naturally so long as she can keep high vibrational and stays in an, an amazing environment. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want to keep her there that, you know, that if she starts getting stressed, that she starts to recognize how mm -hmm. she is feeling and mm -hmm. giving her the tools to quickly shift mm -hmm. herself back to her center place and therefore reassuring her baby inside as well. We can actually change our baby's destiny by our thoughts and by how we feel by, throughout the whole nine months of 
been pregnant. And mm-hmm. this is something that women don't realize even before they conceive. Mm-hmm. As soon as you make that decision to, that you want to have a baby, that's when you start putting out there, what are the characteristics you want for your baby? You mm-hmm. want them to be loving. You want them to be strong. You want them to be kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is very much what I'm focusing on. Yeah. I just love what you're doing. I just believe so much that babies receive everything that's going on with the mother, with the father, with the environment while they're, you know, in the womb. In the womb. And so thank you. The words that are coming to me are um, empowered, sacred pregnancy. Wow. Yes. Beautiful. Just call the program that. And yeah. And you describe your beliefs and what you do after that. But I feel like that's Perfect. Music. I love it. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and your gift. It's just amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sally and Monty, as well. This is amazing. Thank, Thank you. you for it's really important work. Beautiful. Thank you, my lovelies. Thank you. That was so good. Jenny and Mark, I just wanted to, um, I don't know, I can't find the hand raising. Patty had raised her hand too. I'm not sure if you've got people in, front, um, in line already, but just throwing that in there. Yeah. Do, do we have time for one more? Sally, how are you? Are we sure? Sure? Yeah, we've still got like about 12 minutes. Yeah, okay. I'm going to unmute. Sorry, Natasha was first. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just being super fair about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do one more for now with, with this segment. So, um, Natasha? Natasha? Yeah. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Wow. That last one was amazing. <laughs> nice one, Lorraine. I love those. Oh my, I don't know where to go now with mine. Um, anyway, so, um, the word, the kind of intro that I, I use, but actually now listening to Lorraine's also my six month program could probably do with a, with a snappier name. Um, but what I use to introduce myself at the moment is I support conscious business owners and leaders to ignite their soul power to expand their abundance and to have a thriving business that they love. Great. Mm -hmm. So um, working with conscious business owners who are doing something that where they want to have a bigger positive impact in the world through the work that they do. So Mm -hmm. something around the environment, which is really close to my heart. So what the lady was saying in the second to last one kind of really resonated, you know, protecting mother earth, protecting wildlife, um, you know, make having better conditions for humanity, Um, that we can all thrive, you know, given that we all share this beautiful planet and we've got to look after it. So there's, there's the conscious bit is the environmental piece for me. Someone wants to have a bigger and better impact through the work they do. Mm -hmm. Um, um, yeah, I work with the Akashic records. So that's the whole, um, soul purpose, soul power bit about really realigning to who we are at soul level and re realigning to, to our soul light, if you like, um, mm-hmm. you know, our soul frequency, so we can match our soul frequency here on earth while having a human experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so doing energy work, clearing, coaching, I'm a coach, um, visualization. A, that sounds that's, good. Yeah, it just sounds amazing. So what, um, what do you feel like you most need help with right now? Like, is it a title? Is it yeah, so I guess if, if we, like, if there's something to tweak in my intro would be good. Um, and, or, or to think about a title for my six month program, which is helping people to, to do that and to kind of step up and grow their business. So they've got a business already and, and grow it. Where would you like to start? Do, would, you, would you like it to be the title for your program or your what I do statement? What, where would you like to start? So maybe my intro statement okay. just to maybe refine that a little bit. Okay. Your intro. So, okay. So tell us again what you say now um, to yeah. someone who... So um, supporting conscious business owners and leaders to ignite their soul power and expanding their abundance to have a thriving business that they absolutely love. Expand. I feel it might be a bit long. Expand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, help conscious business owners and leaders to ignite their soul power and expand in their abundance to have a thriving business they love. Okay, so tell me your, your ideal client, what are they 
saying right now? What's going on in their head that would make them choose to work with you? Yeah, so I think that they're frustrated. They want to have a bigger impact. They're not getting out there and reaching as many people as they would like. They know that they've got more within them to, to do more. Um, but they're probably a little bit too much in their heads thinking about how should I do it? How should I do it? Rather than connecting with what they really love to be doing and the, that the kind of that piece for themselves that, you know, where they're standing in their absolute power doing the bits of work that they want to do. So they're kind of getting distracted um, and they're not doing what, what they love to do and doing more of that. Mm -hmm. Probably Natasha will be driven bad by me dropping in again. Yeah, I go I for it, Yo, yo, <laughs> sister, I've got to say something to Mark yeah. and Jenny that I, uh, that, so I've worked with Natasha for a little while. Okay. Quite a while, mm -hmm. And there's something that I feel about her messaging that she has quite often put the Akashic Records to the backdrop. Right. There's always been this thing of like, ooh, when we started working together, it was a bit weird. She is weird. So am I. Sorry. Great. And but but that that little tweak is like, I think she needs to embrace that piece, because every time I hear this messaging coming forward, it's not directly being mentioned. Mm. And if somebody is looking for something to do with that, like they can't find her because there's a slightly obscuring thing going on around a uh, soul. <laughs> I know you're going to kill me, but anyway, I just want to see what they have to say about the yeah, sure. I think it could help. I'm open to everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad you said that Sally, because um, like the blandest part of your statement is I support conscious business owners. The conscious business owners part is okay, but it's like, I support because there's so many people out there saying things like I help business owners succeed, you know, like that's the blandest statement. Right. Um, and so there's always a fine line between talking too much about your process versus the result. Mm -hmm. I think my first question would be how, like the people, the people who are coming to you, are they coming to you knowing that they want that kind of work? Because record, like, is that important to them? Um, they're intrigued by it. They probably don't know an awful lot about it. When I sort of talk to them, like in a consultation about what that work involves, that's uh -huh. the bit that then they get really kind of, yeah, this is, this is the work I want to do. Or they're like, no, it's not. So it's very clear. It's like either, yes, I want to do that work in my business or no, I don't. So it makes it quite a clear decision for people. What do you think is intriguing to them about it? Like when they hear that, why do they perk up? What? Um, I think it's, it's more kind of um, around getting to know who they are at that soul level, like really understanding what their gifts are and their power is, as well as looking at past life stuff. So clearing the energies of past life. So they're, they're kind of like on this repeating pattern of behavior in this lifetime. And they're like, I've done the work. Why isn't it like, why am I still batting my head up against a brick wall with this? And where the Akashic Records can really clear that. And then I go really deep with them to really change that behavior around it. Uh -huh. so, so what about leading with that? I use Akashic Records to... And then do you specifically want to work with conscious business owners? Um, yeah, so a lot of my stuff is like small business owners who really want to make an impact because the environment piece is the big piece for me. I want to, I want to work with people that want to make a bigger impact in the world. So it doesn't have to be conscious business owners, but something that kind of really taps into the people that are, yeah, you know, I'm here for a bigger mission in the world and we need to all stand together and, you know, create something amazing in this world because what's what Sally always says, you know, what's, you know, systems that are work, you know, now they just ain't working. Uh -huh. <laughs> we gotta, we got to be pulling together to figure out the new ways and the new world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conscious business, I'm just doing some wordsmithing here. <laughs> uh, owners. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 
I use Akashic Records to help conscious business owners and then I want to say something about the business that they do. Um, succeed in the transformational business they're meant to have, you know, mm -hmm. the business that's, that their, their soul is meant to have. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What would be that final piece for you? If you were to say like, this is what I want them to be able to do, what would be the words you would give it? If you overheard somebody say that you really helped me, Natasha really helped me blank. Yeah, to I think it is about impact, to have a bigger impact through the work that they're doing, but also to love it. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, there's, you know, there's a lot of people making a big impact in the world, but just don't really love their life. Or they, mm -hmm. don't, or they love their business, but have shitty relationships or mm -hmm. their health is really suffering. I, for me, the important part is working with the people who are having the impact, but that their mm -hmm. whole life is aligned. You know, their health, is, their, their health and well-being is, is more balanced. Their relationships are more balanced. So they have this whole piece of everything. It's like sometimes we think, well, we can have this, but we, oh gosh, we can't have that as well. Because if we're successful in business, oh well, you know, sacrificing my health is just like something I should do. So, <laughs> yeah, but we can so have it. What if you just did something like I use Akashic Records to help conscious business owners become happy world changers? Oh, I like that. Happy world changers. And you can play with that. You might yeah. just say happy is not quite it, but, but, but. I like you know, world changers. I like world changers too. I like, I use Akashic records to help conscious business owners become world changers. I guess I wouldn't even perhaps even need the conscious business owners because I think maybe that would, the world changers would, would encompass that in some way. So, well, it depends. If you want to work exclusively with business owners, I would, I would say it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like if, the world changes. If you want to work with people who aren't yet business owners, then you could have a version that's like, I help conscious people. Uh, I, I use Akashic Records to help conscious people find their soul-based mission and become happy world changers. You know, something like yeah. that. So it just depends on who exactly is your target audience. Or you could have two different target audiences and tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I want, I want, I, I work better with people who have got established already what they, what they want um, mm -hmm. and to move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I would mm. call, I'll call them to you. I use Akashic Records to help conscious business owners become world changers. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> Nice. That's a bit simpler, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank oh you. God. Oh my God. Yay. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hilarious, that journey of avoidance of the Akashic Records. And now you're leading with it. It's I don't like, know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to segue in Thank the you. way I do with love and just say that this section is about to be wrapped up. So Patty, I'm sorry, we don't have time for you to work with Mark and Jenny right at this moment. Mark and Jenny, however, are doing uh, extra offers to work with people to do deep dives. And I, I think, do you wanna say something about that Mark and Jenny? Cause that will be a follow up email that we can offer that, but just say something about it. And then I'm just sticking us to time, keeping us to time. Sure, sure. Thanks, Sally. Yeah. So, you know, for those of you who are resonating with, with what we're doing here, here, if you want to go deeper with your work and creating your magnetic message um, or shaping or creating a powerful offering, um, we can help you with that. And one way we can go really deep, and we do this a lot with people, um, and it's a way of changing the trajectory of your business in a short amount of time, is with these deep dives um, and their private two and a half hour mentoring sessions. Um, where we do what we do here, but in a deeper, longer format of deep inquiry and creative conversation, um, where we can really make amazing, amazing things happen. Yeah, we call it your, a power up your purpose deep dive. And, you know, just for example, we recently worked with someone uh, named May, 
who uh, she was a therapist, you know, and she liked what she was doing, but she felt like she was kind of like losing her enthusiasm a little bit. She kind of wanted to make a change, but wasn't quite sure what it was. So we did um, a lot of this like deep inquiry with her. And pretty quickly, she discovered that she had this thread throughout her life, which was a belief that life well lived is a series of transformations leading to more compassion and freedom. And when that kind of sprang forth, it was like this light bulb went on. She goes, oh my God. And all of a sudden, like we realized and she realized in the same moment that she had been helping people as a therapist to like deal with their unhappiness, deal with their crisis. And it's like, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to work with people to be free and, and compassionate. And all of a sudden she was like, I want to be a coach, which had been a little bit an inkling, but it was like, I want to do this and I'm ready to do this. And, um, you know, so then we came up with a whole, what we call a purpose page, like just channeling it with her. We came up with a website copy for this page that tells people what she does. Um, and then she had a book in her she wanted to do. And we talked about it and came up with the title and the structure. And so after two and a half hours, she was like, I have a new direction. I get the golden thread of my life, the purpose I want to do. We had text for a website uh, and a book she was about to jump in. And that was after you know, two and a half hours. So that's the kind of thing that can happen in a, in a power up call. That's super exciting. Yeah. So if any of you are interested in that, um, maybe the best way is, um, should we put in the e our email or just have people type? So what up? do you think? But should we, yeah, we could just have people. Um, we, could, we could have you, if you're interested in deep dive with Mark and Jenny, why don't you put deep dive? We can pull you off the chat, but I also think to make sure that absolutely everybody has, we, we'll do follow-ups, right? Mm -hmm. But also, Mark and Jenny, put in your email so people can sure. copy and paste it. Sure. Uh, but there's a few people just immediately saying deep dive. So we, we will have that on the chat afterwards, but... Great. And later, I'll just go in and, and message yeah. people so I can get your email and we yeah. can yeah, we'll connect gotcha. up. But yeah. So yeah, just put in deep dive if you want to know more about how we can help you in a in a power up deep dive and, and <laughs> yeah. do a message in a bit and we can connect. And we can also give our email as well. So yeah, which we'll, I'll do that too. We'll, do that. well, thank you everyone. That was fun. Yeah, thank you everyone volunteered. This is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Go to Sally, do you want to go ahead and uh, switch the recording? Yeah. Thank you very much. And it's